Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. A new scientific study attempts to rewrite the conventional story of how planets form. A team of scientists using images from the ALMA and VLA telescopes are proposing that planetary formation is a process that happens exponentially faster than astronomers have ever thought possible. Space scientists have been puzzled by what appears to be an intractable shortage of planet-forming dust in the so-called mature disks of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. As we reported in 2018, Astronomers using ALMA attempted to determine how much material is present in the disks around stars that are thought to be only 1 to 3 million years old. When they compared their estimates to the masses of star systems that have fully formed planets, they realized that the so-called young star systems did not have enough matter in their disks to eventually form planets. According to the new paper, scheduled for publication in Astronomy and Astrophysics, the answer to this puzzle is that planet formation is a much more rapid process than astronomers have ever believed. The scientists propose that a sufficient amount of dust to form planets around a parent star arises surprisingly early in a star's life. As the lead author of the paper stated, we need to look earlier instead of looking for missing mass. The team concludes that around stars thought to be as young as 100,000 years old, planet formation has already begun. The co-author of the paper states, The implication of this discovery is profound. For decades, we've thought that planet formation should happen during the protoplanetary disk phase. But by pushing the beginning stage of planet formation back, we have to rethink what the birthplace of planets actually looked like. In recent years, Scientific discovery has forced a similar crisis on the question of how stars form. Consider these images of a stellar nursery in the aptly named Snake Nebula, where a number of stars are forming along a filament, and the stars themselves break up along a cylinder. This is in stark contrast to gravitational theory, which predicts that a center of mass exists, toward which all of the surrounding material in a nebular cloud tends to move and to congregate to eventually form a star. What's more, scientists studying the Snake Nebula found that the material needed to be drawn in to form massive stars is far less than gravitational models predict. In 2014, the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics issued a press release which stated, Previous theories propose that high-mass stars form within very massive, isolated cores, weighing at least 100 times the mass of the Sun. These new results show that that is not the case. The data also demonstrate that massive stars aren't born alone, but in groups. The team also was surprised to find that these two nebular patches had fragmented into individual star seeds so early in the star formation process. They detected bipolar outflows and other signs of active, ongoing star formation. The economist Milton Friedman once said, The only relevant test of the validity of a hypothesis is comparison of prediction with experience. The prediction of the standard solar nebular hypothesis is that gravitational collapse and accretion are the processes that lead to the creation of stars and planets and these formative processes occur over countless eons of time. In contrast, the electric universe and plasma cosmology propose that the electromagnetic phenomenon called the Z-pinch, also known as the Bennett pinch, is a dominant organizational phenomenon in the cosmos. It was the father of plasma cosmology, Hannes Alfvén, who made the outrageous prediction that stars would form by cosmic Z-pinches along vast networks of filaments with an electromagnetic scavenging effect in molecular clouds in each current filament. Alfane wrote of the Bennett or Z-pinch in 1986 that parallel currents attract each other was known already at the times of Ampere. It's easy to understand that in a plasma, currents should have a tendency to collect the filaments. In 1934, it was explicitly stated by Bennett that this should lead to the formation of a pinch. Alfane continues, the problem which led him to the discovery was that the magnetic storm-producing medium, the solar wind with present terminology, was not flowing out uniformly from the sun. Hence, it was a problem in cosmic physics which led to the introduction of the pinch effect. 
However, to most astrophysicists, it is an unknown phenomenon. Indeed, important fields of research, for example, the treatment of the state in interstellar regions, including the formation of stars, are still based on a neglect of Bennett's discovery more than half a century ago. Present-day students in astrophysics hear nothing about it. More than a decade ago, Alfane's prediction was confirmed when the ESA's Herschel Space Observatory imaged a, quote, incredible network of filamentary structures seen in the constellation of the Southern Cross. A 2009 ESA report stated that a dark, cool area such as this would be bustling with activity was unexpected, but the images reveal a surprising amount of turmoil. The interstellar material is condensing into continuous and interconnected filaments, glowing from the light emitted by newborn stars at various stages of development. The conventional explanation for these filaments was the dissipation of some, quote, large-scale turbulence involving exploding stars and sonic booms. However, such explosions, which are not evident, would be expected to impose some radial curvature on the filaments, which we simply do not see. And the claim that the filaments are, quote, glowing from the light emitted by newborn stars cannot be tenable, because the filaments glow steadily along their length demonstrating that the light is intrinsic to the filaments, as one expects if the light output is provided by electric current. Moreover, in 2011, even finer images from Herschel provided the conclusive evidence that cosmic-scale electric currents flow along the filaments. An ESA report at the time states, The filaments are huge, stretching for tens of light years through space, and Herschel has shown that newly born stars are often found in the densest parts of them. Such filaments in interstellar clouds have been glimpsed before by other infrared satellites, but they have never been seen clearly enough to have their widths measured. Now Herschel has shown that regardless of the length or density of a filament, the width is always roughly the same. The lead author of a paper on the discovery stated, This is a very big surprise. The ESA report concludes, This consistency of the widths demands an explanation. Any attempt to explain the filament's constant width by explosions is also untenable. Explosions would cause the filaments to vary markedly in brightness and width, depending on the density of the interstellar dust and the perspective from which they are viewed. However, physicist and Thunderbolt's chief science advisor, Wal Thornhill, wrote of this discovery. The constant width over vast distances is due to the current flowing along the Birkeland filaments, each filament constituting a part of a larger electric circuit. And in a circuit, the current must be the same in the whole filament, although the current density can vary in the filament due to the electromagnetic pinch effect. The absence of the expected amount of dust material to form both stars and planets gravitationally is not surprising at all if such objects are formed by the electromagnetic z-pinch. As Alfe noted, the electromagnetic force is exponentially greater than gravity and is scalable up to the cosmic magnitude. While Thornhill has proposed that planets also form electromagnetically, often along the same current filaments on which stars form, and the weird zoo of exoplanetary systems discovered in recent decades, including the astonishing abundance of so-called hot Jupiters, or gas giants orbiting impossibly closely to their parent stars, has only affirmed the astounding failure of gravitational accretion theory to explain science discovery. Another important aspect of both star and planet formation is the evidence for both such objects forming in pairs the result of the electrical, quote, doubling effect of twin current filaments. As Thornhill explained in an earlier Space News, Birkeland currents are formed by two parallel current filaments, which attract each other according to Ampere's law. As they draw closer, the magnetic attraction between them is overcome by electrostatic repulsion caused by charge separation within those filaments. As a result, those filaments circle about each other to form a twisted pair a configuration well known to electrical engineers. And it is this pairing that tends to concentrate matter in toroids and closely orbiting bodies. In this sense, plasma science explains a mystery that remains unresolved in standard cosmology. As Fizz.org noted in a 2018 report, the origin of binary stars has long been one of the central problems of astronomy. 
The report noted that protostars and young stars have been found to be more likely to form in binary pairs, as they are strung at intervals along a filament inside a molecular cloud. The report states of this scientific discovery, about half of the binaries are in elongated core structures, and they conclude that the initial cores were also elongated structures. One of their most significant major conclusions is that each dusty core of material is likely to be the birthplace of two stars, not the single star usually modeled. And we now have evidence that a similar pairing can occur in the formation of planets. In 2018, the Keck Observatory published a report titled Planets Around Other Stars Are Like Peas in a Pod. It states, The team found that exoplanets tend to be the same sizes as their neighbors. If one planet is small, the next planet around that same star is very likely to be small as well. And if one planet is big, the next is likely to be big. They also found that planets orbiting the same star tend to have a regular orbital spacing. We also note that in 2004, Thornhill and Dr. C.J. Ransom conducted independent plasma experiments on the rapid electrical formation of stone spherules. As seen in these remarkable images, Ransom and Thornhill successfully reproduced the unique forms of virtually every type of rocky body we see today. From the solid spheres we are familiar with representing a typical planet, to bodies with complex geological layering, to spherules with equatorial bands and equatorial bulges, to dramatic hemispheric dichotomies. And of course, we see the fused pairing of spherules, which is a common bilobate form we see among comets and asteroids. So if prediction is the only meaningful test of the validity of a hypothesis, the question must be asked. Why are space scientists today still not even entertaining the concepts of the electric universe and plasma cosmology? Consider institutionalized science's response to the work of Hannes Alfein, which is described by history of science scholar Stephen G. Brush as follows. The continuing resistance to Alfein's work is based on a widely held opinion that his predictions are not derived from a plausible physical theory that is, a theory that conforms to the dominant paradigm. If a theory is not acceptable, it does not gain credit by making successful predictions. This would imply that the role of prediction as a means of evaluating scientific theories has been exaggerated. But one of the primary missions of this video series has been to document for posterity the actual predictive records of the electric universe and plasma cosmology. The only position we have taken is that the astounding successes of these predictions make them worthy of sober scientific investigation at the level of institutionalized science. Well into the 21st century, this invitation for scientific progress remains unanswered.